Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is Introduction to Python, our first Python program. So in the last video, we saw how we could use the Python shell as basically a super calculator. And we played around with a bunch of different formulas like Celsius times 9 divided by 5 plus 32 or kilometers times 0 0.621. But the way we were doing it last time, we had a bit of a problem because we need to retype these formulas every time we want to use them. And so, you know, as I suggested last time, you can use the Python shell as, as, as basically a super calculator, but that's not really creating a program. In order to turn these into programs, we need to store them into a file and uh, be able to reuse them whenever we want. So it turns out that idle has a built-in file editor, as I suggested last, last video. And so if, you, if you're running idle, um, see last video for how instructions for how to run idle. Um, so if you go to the file menu, there's an option there to create a new file. So if you go ahead and do that, the editor will start up and you will see what's being shown on the bottom right. Now, uh, our first attempt here could be just um, to retype what we were previously typing into the Python shell. So remember last time we started out with just basically adding a bunch of numbers together. So say I say three plus two and go ahead and put that into our editor here. Um, and when we try and run it by going to the run menu in the editor and saying run module, it, it, it's going to ask us if we want to save the file. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save the file as example.py. Python files uh, are stored with the extension py. Uh, and then if I go ahead and run it, um, by again choosing run, run module, it does not do what I expect. Um, here's what's actually going to show up. So if you look at that line with a restart on there, you can kind of see it, it is attempting to run my example.py file, but there's no output. What's going on here? Well, in our Python programs, we need to explicitly tell Python that we want to output to our uh, shell interpreter. So uh, I can do that with what's called a print function. And so here, here it is right here. Uh, I'm going to say print, and then I have a pair of parentheses, and between the parentheses, I say what I want it to print. In this case, I want it to print 3 plus 2. So I say print parentheses 3 plus 2. And now if I run it, sure enough, if you look down there at the second time I've run it, uh, you can see that it, it is printing a 5. So this is doing what we want. Now here, uh, I'm, I'm printing the results of carrying on a mathematical equation. Uh, I can output other things. Remember last lecture, we talked about uh, the fact that Python works with integers, it works with floating point numbers, it also works with strings, which allows to manipulate text. And so what I've got down here at the bottom, print, quote, go Stanford, quote, remember those quotes indicate that uh, I have a string of characters, G, O, space, S, T, A, N, F, O, R, and D, rather than I've got some variable named go and a variable named Stanford. And so if I go ahead and say print, and I tell it to print the string go Stanford, in fact, that's exactly what it'll do. So I had print three plus two, and I had print go Stanford. And if we look down here at the bottom, you can see it printed both of those. Okay, so um, last lecture, we converted Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let's create a little program that does this conversion for us. Here's my first attempt at doing this. Uh, okay, I go ahead and create a variable called Celsius. I store a 30 in it. Um, I carry out my little calculation there um, and store the result in the variable Fahrenheit. And then uh, I've got a fancier, slightly fancier version of the print statement here. Uh, quote, temperature in Fahrenheit is, end quote, comma, and then the name of the variable Fahrenheit. And that's actually going to print both of these items out. It's going to print the string temperature in Fahrenheit is, and then it's going to go ahead and print Fahrenheit. And if we go ahead and go to the run menu in the editor, and we choose run module, sure enough, this works. It says temperature it's in Fahrenheit is 86 degrees, so that works. But there's a bit of a problem here, and that is my program here includes setting the Celsius variable to 30. So if it's always 30 degrees out, um, this program works. Uh, but you know, if it is always 30 degrees out, that's not super useful anyway, because I'll probably figure out that's 86 degrees Fahrenheit soon enough if it's 30 degrees every day. So um, I want this to change so that instead of always running with Celsius equals 30, I run with different temperatures in Celsius. 
And in order to do that, I need to get input from the user. And so that's our next step. Uh, to get input from the user, I'm going to use this uh, new input function here. I'm going to say input. I've got a pair of parentheses. And inside that pair of parentheses, I'm going to put a string there that is going to prompt the user for the information we want. So in our little example here, I'm telling the user uh, that I want information from them, but I want them to know that the information I want from them is their name. And uh, when I go ahead and, and, and execute this input function, it's going to return a value to me that I can store into a variable. So you know, I generally wouldn't just say input, enter your name. I would actually do what I've got down here in, in the bottom here. I would say user underscore name. Remember, you can use the underscore in variables. Uh, user underscore name equals input, enter your name. And so what this code here would do is it would prompt the user. It would tell the user that we want their name. They would enter their name and the results of whatever they entered would be stored in the variable username where I could use it for other purposes. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take this new input function and use it in our uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit program. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask the user to input the temperature in Celsius. Um, and so you'll notice I've got two lines here. Uh, why do I have two lines? Well, the thing is that that input function is, is designed to return string data types. So if the user enters in 30, I'm not gonna get the number 30. I'm actually going to get the string consisting of a three followed by a zero and I can't use strings directly to uh, enter into mathematical formulas. So I need to convert the string three zero into the number three zero. And so I, that's what the second line here does. Float is going to take uh, something inside the parentheses there. It's what we refer to as a parameter. It's gonna take its parameter uh, and convert it to a floating point number. So in this case, uh, it will take whatever the user entered, whatever string the user entered in as the input and it will convert it to an actual number and it will store that value into the Celsius uh, variable. And uh, if we want, we can actually get rid of the, uh, the intermediate variable here, temp. I can put this all in one line. I can say Celsius equals request the user enter the temperature in Celsius. So the user will enter the temperature in Celsius and that will be returned. Uh, that result that the user has returned, for example, the string three zero will immediately be passed into float um, and float will convert it to uh, from the string quote three zero to the number three zero where we can use in our mathematical formula. And so here's our program. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the user to enter the temperature in Celsius. I'm going to convert it to floating point number. I'm going to store that in the variable or storage location called Celsius, uh, and I'm going to retrieve the storage location Celsius. I'm gonna multiply it by nine, divide it by five and add 32 to it. Um, I'm gonna store that result in Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna go ahead and print temperature in Fahrenheit is, uh, and then uh, whatever the result in the variable Fahrenheit is. Now, if you look at the handout, I've actually uh, taken a further step out of this. Um, and so you could get rid of the variable here, Fahrenheit, and just put the Celsius times nine divided by five plus 32 right there into the print statement. And we could even take it a step further and we could put this all in one line. I could say um, print temperature in Fahrenheit is, and then float input enter temperature in Celsius times nine divided by five plus 32. I haven't done that. And actually one of the reasons why this version is slightly longer than the version in the handout is because the font used uh, for these videos is much larger and it didn't really fit very nicely in one line uh, in the video. So, you know, in general, I do recommend that you break it down into smaller size steps. It's easier to read uh, and it's harder to make mistakes. If you cram this all onto one line, it is technically possible to write this entire program in a single line of code, but it's gonna be hard for people to figure out what you're doing and it's gonna be super easy for you to accidentally make a mistake and it's gonna be a little bit hard for you to track down your error. So I don't really recommend that. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and run this program a bunch of times. And you can see uh, each of the times it's asking us, please enter the temperature in Celsius. So up at the top, I said it was 30 degrees and it said, oh, great. That means the temperature in Fahrenheit is 86. And I reran it and said, enter the temperature in Celsius. I said it's 20 degrees. 
said, okay, great. That temperature is 68 in Fahrenheit. You know, if, if the temp heaven forbid the temperature in Celsius is zero, that means the temperature in uh, Fahrenheit is 32 and so on. So um, we've created our first program and you can see that it's, once we've written it, it's super easy to use and it's much easier than retyping that formula over and over and over again. And of course, if the formula were much more uh, extensive, uh, it would save us even more time. So this is something that computers are really great at. And um, it actually turns out Python is pretty extensively used uh, across campus in scientific labs. And in fact, uh, different departments, like for example, the uh, chemistry department, the biology department have, have sort of emphasized to the computer science department that they would really like us to teach Python. And that's one of the reasons why we switched CS106A over to Python. All right, so that is our first Python program. Um, next lecture, we'll be uh, extending our programming capabilities to do more interesting things. But um, I think that's enough for today. And this gives you an idea of what programming looks like and how programming languages work. I'll talk to you soon.